How are you guys doing? Today is Tuesday, March 16th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an individual profile on Blake Griffin, the now starting power forward. I don't know if he's going to be starting yet, but he's now the power forward for the Brooklyn Nets, who has been, who's had a career that's kind of bounced him all over the place, but now I think he's found himself in the right situation, in a situation that may possibly find himself uh, winning a championship finally after all these years. So if you're unfamiliar with Blake Griffin, he stands at about six foot nine, 250. He's incredibly compact. He's very strong. He's very athletic. One of the best uh, verticals I've ever seen for someone that size. He was an amazing college basketball player, an amazing NBA player, and of course, for a for a good amount of his young career, he had a chance of having one of the greatest point guards in Chris Paul, help him grow to be one of the best players ever, and now he'll get a chance to play in Brooklyn alongside another one of the greatest point guards uh, in Kyrie Irving, another one of the greatest wings that ever play the game in James Harden, and quite possibly just like one of the greatest scorers to play the game in Kevin Durant. And James Harden and Kyrie Irving are also two of the greatest scorers to ever play the game, but he's going to be able to play with those guys. Uh, and the next time I give a profile, if I give another profile, he very well could be a champion. So with this, I think that his numbers and his accolades are going to speak for himself, for themselves, because I mean, he turns... 32 today, and I'm just going to go back and give just background who Blake Griffin is. So originally, he's from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, and as a prospect, he and his brother established themselves as great enough prospects to go play at Oklahoma. Um, so when he went to Oklahoma, Blake Griffin would play two years at Oklahoma. His first year, he would start 28 of the 33 games that he would play. And in his freshman season under Jeff Capel, uh, he w- the team would end up going 23-12. and 12. They would make it to the second round of the tournament. But Blake Griffin would end up sitting out the end of that year because he went down with an MCL tear against Kansas. But in his freshman season, he would go on to average 14.7 points. 9.1 rebounds, uh, just under two assists, and about a steal per game while shooting 57% from the field. He didn't shoot it all from the three-point line, but he shot about 59% from the uh, from the foul line. And he would, I mean, he would establish himself as a good enough player, but he wouldn't really get Big 12 uh he he wouldn't get Big Twelve awards until his sophomore season, and his sophomore season he was a lot better as a sophomore at Oklahoma in his two thousand eight two thousand nine season. He would start all thirty five games in a season where the Oklahoma Sooners would go thirty and six. They would finish second in the Big Twelve, and they would make it all the way to the Elite Eight under Jeff Capel. That's the furthest that Oklahoma had ever made it with Jeff Capel the third as their head coach. In that season, um, Blake Griffin would end up averaging 22.7 points, 14.4 rebounds, 2.3 assists, just over a steal and just over a block, averaging 33 minutes a game, shooting 65% from the field, 37.5% from three, averaging 0.3 or 0.2 attempts per game, by the way. And he shot 59% from the free throw line. And of course, this season, he will go on to be named the Big 12 Player of the Year. He was the NCAA rebounding leader. He was a consensus first team All-American, and he was the National College Player of the Year. That's how good Blake Griffin was. And following his sophomore year at Oklahoma, he established himself as a good enough prospect to be taken with the number one overall pick in the 2009 NBA draft by the Los Angeles Clippers. That's how old he is. I mean, he got drafted in 2009 to give a sense of uh, when he was drafted. And ever since he's been at the Clippers, he was able to establish a, he was able to build up an incredible career for himself that started from the incredible, from, from, that started off amazingly from the beginning. Um, in the first year of his career, he would not play. He would have to forego his debut because he, he injured his kneecap when he was dunking during a summer league game. Um, but in his second year, he would come back and put and put up an incredible rookie year that will go down as one of the best rookie years in NBA history. 
in his age 21 season, which would be his second year since being drafted, but his first year in the NBA, which would technically make him a rookie, he would start all 82 games in a season where the Los Angeles Clippers would finish 32-50 and 50 with the 13th best record in the Western Conference, or the third worst. He would average 38 minutes a game, the only time in his career Blake Griffin has ever averaged 38 minutes a game. In his first season in the NBA, he averaged 22.5 points, 12.1 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 0.8 steals, and about half a block a game, which is still incredibly good for a rookie, all while shooting 50.6% from the field. He shot 29.2% from three, averaging 0.3 attempts uh, per game that season all while shooting 64% from the foul line. And even though the Clippers didn't make the playoffs, Blake Griffin would actually go on and make the all-star team for the very first time in his NBA career. And of course, uh, he would win the slam dunk contest over after dunking over a car, and he would go on to be named the NBA Rookie of the Year in 2011, even though the Clippers didn't really win anything. That's how good Blake Griffin was in his first year in the NBA. This would transition into his second year, into his age 22 season. He would start all 66 games in a lockout season. Um, and in 2011-2012, they would go on to make the playoffs because, of course, this would be the year that they added Chris Paul. They won 40 games, which is eight more than they had won the previous year, but they had, won they had lost 24 less games, so they were a significantly better team. And in his second year in Los Angeles, he was averaging 36.2 minutes per game, and that's the most, po that's the most minutes he's ever averaged in a season – since then, I guess the second most since his first year, but he's never averaged that many minutes in a season in his career since or after that. He went on his points per game dropped from twenty two point five to twenty point seven. His rebounds dropped from twelve point one to ten point nine, and those would be the how the top two rebounding per totals he would ever put up in his career. His assists would go down from 3.8 to 3.2. His field goal percentage would go up from 50.6 to 54.9. His three-point percentage would drop from 29 to 12%. Uh, and then his free throw percentage would drop from 64 to 52. But he would go on to make his second all-star game in his NBA career. He would go on to be he would go on to make the all NBA second team for the very first time in his career. And Blake Griffin was starting to make a name for himself as in his second year in his career he was already rated as a top ten player in the NBA. And then once they made the playoffs, they would go on to beat the Grizzlies in the first round and then they would go on to lose this to the Spurs in a year where the Spurs would go on and lose to the Heat. But or the Spurs would lose to the Thunder, and the Thunder would lose to the Heat. That's where they were in about 2012. Um, but this would transition into Blake Griffin's third year in the NBA in 2012-2013. He would start all 80 of the games that he would play in in a season where the Los Angeles Clippers would finish with the fourth best record in the West. Um, with 56 wins, they had the same amount of losses as the year before, but they, of course, had 16 more wins. Uh, in this season, Blake Griffin would average 32 minutes a game, which is four less than he did the, the previous season. His points per game went down from 20.7 to 18 in his second year with Chris Paul. His rebounds per game went down from 10.9 to 8.3. His assists went up from 3.2 to 3.7. His steals went up from 0.8 to 1.2. His blocks stayed at about 0.6. From the field, his field goal percentage dropped from 54 to 53. His three-point percentage went up from 12 to 18. And then his free throw percentage went up from 52 to about 66%. Uh, and he would go on to make the all-star team. And he would go on to make the all-NBA second team for the second time in his career. That would be the third all-star team that he'd make in his third full season in the NBA. And once the Clippers made it to the playoffs, they would actually lose in the first round to the Grizzlies. Chris Paul would win the All-Star Game MVP actually this year. And this is the second year that the Miami Heat would win their championship, just to give a little bit of context as to what this season was. So this would transition into Blake Griffin's fourth season in the NBA, where he would start all 80 of his games 
and a season where the Los Angeles Clippers would end up with the third best record in the West as they finished with one more win than the previous season. Uh, this is the season also where Jamal Crawford would win sixth man of the year, but in Blake Griffin's fourth year in the NBA, he would be named an all-star for the, for, for the fourth time in his career. And he would also be named to the All-NBA second team for the third and for the third time in his career. And that the most recent time that he's ever been named to an All-NBA second team or a team that high was in 2013. 2014. In his fourth season, he upped his scoring, or I guess he upped his minutes per game average from 32.5 to 35.8 minutes per game. And at the same time, he increased his point average from 18 to 24.1, the second highest points per game average he's ever put up in his career. He upped his rebounds per game average from 8.3 to 9.5. He increased his his assists from 3.7 to 3.9. He kept his steals at about 1.2. He kept his blocks at about 0.6. His field goal percentage dropped from 53 to 52, but he still took three and a half more shots per season. His three-point percentage went up from 17 to 27, and then from the free throw line, his percentage jumped from about 66 to 71. And in his fourth season, after making it to the All-NBA second team for the third time in a row, the Clippers would beat the Warriors in the first round of the playoffs. This would be the last time that the Warriors lost this early in the playoffs for a bit. And then they would go on to lose to the Thunder in the conference semis before the Thunder would lose to the Spurs the year that the Spurs would go on to win the finals. To give a little bit of background, but of course Blake Griffin was the bet was one of was the leading scorer on those Clipper teams. Uh, that was the last time he'd be named second team, but of course he would still remain one of the best players in the NBA. Transitioning into his fifth year in the NBA, his age 25 year, he would start all 67 of the games that he would play in a season where the Los Angeles Clippers would finish with the third best record in the Western Conference um, with a 56-26 and 26 record. They had one less win than they did the previous season. And in his fifth season, Blake Griffin's Minutes per game average would be about the same. His points per game number average would drop from 24.1 to 21.9. His rebounds per game would drop from 9.5 to 7.6. His assists would increase from 3.9 to 5.3. His steals would drop from 1.2 to 0.9. Uh, also, his field goal percentage dropped from 52 to 50.2. His three-point percentage shot up to about 40%, but he was still taking 0.43s per game. And his free throw percentage increased a little bit to about 73% as he would go on to make his fifth all-star game. And he would go on to make his first ever all-NBA third team still being recognized as a top 15 player in the NBA. And once they made it to the playoffs, the Clippers would beat the Spurs in the first round, the team that won the finals the previous year. And then they would go on to lose to the Rockets the year that the Rockets would go on and lose to the Warriors and the Warriors would go on to win. But just to give a sense of that, Blake Griffin was still one of the better players in the NBA as all that was going on. That'll be the last. That'll be the last season that Blake Griffin would make the All Star team for a bit. So as we transition into his age twenty six season in Los Angeles, uh, he would he he would be he would start to go through some injury plagued years. So in his age twenty six season, he would only start thirty five games, or he would he would only play thirty five games. In a season where the Los Angeles Clippers would finish with the fourth best record in the West as they finished with three less wins than they did the previous year. Jamal Crawford would also win the sixth man of the year this year as well. Uh, In the 35 games he played, he would average about 33 minutes. His points per game average at about the same at about 21.4. His rebounds per game increased from about 7.6 to 8.4. His assists per game dropped from 5.3 to 4.9. His steals stayed at about 0.8. His blocks stayed at about 0.5. His field goal percentage dropped below 50% for the first time in his career at 49.9, which is virtually 50. Uh, He shot 33% from three while averaging half of an attempt per game. And then from the foul line, he was still shooting about 72% from the foul line. Uh, and like I said, the, and this, is, this would also be a year where the Clippers would lose in the first round to the Trailblazers. Um, so this would transition to Blake Griffin's next injury prone or next injury riddled season. In 2016-17, in his age 27 season, he would start 61 games, which is still a lot of games. Uh, in a season where the Los Angeles Clippers would finish with the fourth best record in the West. They finished with two less wins than the year prior. 
Um, but in that season, Blake Griffin would go on to average about 34 minutes, which is a little bit more than he did the previous year. He averaged about 21.6 points, which is about what he averaged before. His rebounds stayed at about 8. His assists stayed at about 4.9. His steals stayed at about 0.9. His blocks at about 0.4. His field goal percentage at about 49%. His three-point percentage at about 33%. But this is the first time he averaged at least over or at least one three-pointer per game, averaging nearly two. This is when he started to become a three-point shooter a little bit. And he shot 76% from the line. This is when he started to kind of transition his game to become more of a shooter. But this would be his second year in a row in which he missed the All-Star game. This, but he's, but through this time, he still had five of his first seven seasons he was an All-Star. So this would transition into 2017-18 in his last year with the Clippers. Because 16-17, that was his last full season with the Clippers in 2017-18. After 33 games, he would get traded to the Detroit Pistons. And for the entirety of that season, he would average about 34 minutes averaging about 21.4 points, which is what he was averaging the previous three seasons. Uh, he went on to average 7.4 rebounds, which is a tick down, probably one rebound less than he did the year before. He averaged 5.8 assists, which is the most assists he'd ever average in a season in his career. Set, he averaged about 0.7 assists, steals, which is the lowest he'd ever average in his career at that point, 0.3 blocks, same, that, same with that as well. From the field, he shot 43.8% from the field. Up until that season, that'll be the lowest he's ever shot from the field. 34.5% from three, which is a tick higher than he had shot before. And this time he was shooting 5.6% from three. This is the first time in his career he had averaged more than one made three in his career. And now he consistently does so. He's been doing so since 2017, 2018. And then he also shot 78% from the foul line for the entirety of the year, which is the highest percentage from the free throw line that he's ever shot in a season um, that would be the third year in a row that he would miss the all-star game but of course that would go on to be that would end the next year but also in 2017-18 the Pistons would just go on to miss the playoffs as they finished with a 39-43 record which was two more wins in the previous year but it, it was there was just enough for them to miss the playoffs and then Blake Griffin would actually turn it on for the Pistons for one season in the very next season. In 2018-2019, his age 29 season, he would start all 75 of the games that he would play in a season where the Detroit Pistons would go would finish with a 41-41 and record. At, fit, at Sitting at 500, they would finish with the 8th best record in the Eastern Conference, and they would go on to make the playoffs. This would be the last full season that Blake Griffin like actually played from beginning to end. He would average 35 minutes, which is about what he was averaging in his prime years. Uh, and in that season, he would see his points per game shoot up to 24.5, the highest they'd ever been in his career. His total rebounds per game was about 7.5, one of the lowest he's ever had in his career. He had 5.4 assists, which is the second highest he'd ever put up in his career at that point. Uh, 0.7 steals, one of the lowest, uh, 0.4 blocks, one of the lowest. From the field, he shot 46.2% as he, as he took more three-pointers, um, but, but that was the second lowest field goal percentage he'd ever shot from the field. From three, he shot 36.2% from the field, averaging seven three-pointers taken a game as he made two and a half of them, the most three-pointers he's ever shot and made in a season. Um, and then he also went on to shoot 75% from the free throw line. At the same time, he would go on to be named to the All-Star Game for the sixth time in his career. And at this time, this would be six times in nine seasons, which is two-thirds of the time that he was in the NBA. He was an All-Star. He would be named to the All-NBA third team for the second time in his NBA career, being recognized as a top 15 player in the NBA. And once the Detroit Pistons made the playoffs, they would end up losing in the first round to the Milwaukee Bucks. But that's what Blake Griffin was going through. That was at least his last full season in, or that was his last full season in Detroit. And then going into 2019, 2020, he was recovering from left knee surgery. And then he had to get a second surgery. And then he missed the remaining of the season 
as a result of the injury. So in 2019, 2020, in his age 30, in his age 30 season, he would end up starting 18 games in a season where the Detroit Pistons would finish with the 13th best record in the East with a 20 and 46 record. Even though it was a shortened season due to COVID, they lost 20 or they, yeah, they, they, they won 21 less games than the year before and they had lost five more than the year before, than the year before, even though they, like I said, even though they played less games. Uh, in those 18 games, Blake Griffin would see his minutes per game drop to 28.4, the only time he's ever averaged below 30 minutes a game. He averaged 15.5 points, 4.7 rebounds, 3.3 assists, 0.4 steals, 0.4 blocks. He shot 35% from the field, 24% from three, and 77% from the foul line in that stretch. And then this season, you've seen him show a little bit of a comeback, and you can see where he is as a player right now. Um, going into his age 31 season, which is where he currently is now, he, uh, Blake Griffin right now is very slowly easing back from uh, a couple of really bad knee injuries that put him out after his last All-Star game, or his last all-star season with the Detroit Pistons. So far, he's played 20 games in a season where the Detroit Pistons are not playing incredibly well, but he was moved to the Brooklyn Nets. As of right now, this season, in the 20 games he's playing, he's he upped his average, he upped his minutes per game to 31.3. He's averaging 12.3 points, 5.2 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and 0.7 steals, 0.1 blocks. He's shooting 36.5% from the field, which is a slight tick better than what he did last year, but nothing close to what he did in his prime. His three-point percentage is a little bit up to 31%, but he's, and he's still shooting more threes than he ever did earlier in his career, so he's doing good on that front. And from the foul line, he's shooting about 71%. And now he's actually going to he's actually placed on a really solid Brooklyn Nets team who has a player that has a GOAT profile in Kevin Durant, and he's placed with two elite guards in James Harden and Kyrie Irving. And I think this will be the most formidable team in the East once they add Blake Griffin. And once you look at the player that he is now, considering today he's turning only 32 years old, I think he has a lot of incredible basketball ahead of him, and he has a lot of incredible basketball behind him. Uh, I have I totally believe that for the 2021 year, he's definitely going to be a player that is going to be worth watching, especially as the Nets develop as a team, and they especially as they incorporate this player into their team. And of course, if he proves that he's no longer an elite player, then he will no longer have a that he will no longer have a profile next year. But as of right now, I think that Bl I always hold a little hope out for Blake Griffin because I remember how amazing of a player he was and how great of a player he was his last full season when he was fully healthy in the NBA. And with that said, I want to thank everyone for listening to all 22 minutes of this piece. I hope, I hope all is well. And if you ever get a chance to watch Blake Griffin, just watch him play. He's, wearing, he's now wearing number two uh, for the Brooklyn Nets. And if you ever get to watch him, he's, he's actually a really good player to watch play. He's built like a football player. He has a lot better footwork than you'd think. He's built... Uh, considering he's a player that didn't have much of a jump shot early on, he's really come a long way as a jump shooter as the NBA has evolved right under him. You see a lot of bigger players that have not evolved with the NBA, but he was actually kind of able to, and he was able to become an all-star in the new age NBA, which I think is a very big uh, accomplishment. And I think he's going to make the Brooklyn Nets that much better and that much more formidable in the NBA playoffs. And with that said, once again, uh, if you ever get a chance, if you're watching the Brooklyn Nets, get a chance to peep out Blake Griffin too, because Blake Griffin is an elite basketball player as well. With that said, I want to thank everyone once again for listening to this piece. I hope all is well, and then I will catch you with an individual profile following this. But I want to thank you once again. Once Today is March 16th, 2021. I want to wish Blake Griffin a happy 32nd birthday. I want to thank everyone once again for listening to The Elite. I'm James Sims out here in this quarantine. Thanks for listening to my piece. I hope all is well. And peace out. I'll catch you with another piece after this.